So in this video, something that I probably don't do enough of on my channel, but I'm gonna bring you onto the golf course with me and show you just how I play golf. So this video is brought to you and sponsored by Y Food. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video, but effectively we're gonna play three holes. We're gonna play 15, 16, 17 here and the Arden course at the Forest of Arden. And I'm gonna talk you through my game, the decisions that I make, the clubs that I choose, what shots I'm looking to hit. And the goal really is to, as we play these three holes, give you some tips and drills and some ideas that you can use the very next time you play to help you get the most out of your round of golf. Because we know that performance and score isn't always about the technical aspects of the swing. It can be just about decision-making, shot choice, and just managing your game a little bit better. So we're gonna start here on this 15th par three. We're gonna go through exactly the club that I would choose and how I see this shot. So the first hole we're on is the 15th par three. Now this is playing 181 yards to the flag with a little bit of wind off the left and it's slightly into it, but not a huge amount. Now I've got a seven iron. Seven iron for me is around about a 185, 190 yard club. So I should be pin high just past. That little bit of wind means that should be around about pin high. So this is, should be a perfect club for me. So the first thing you have to do, obviously work out the yardage to the flag and then the playing yardage with the wind elevation temperature involved. Now the second thing I need to do is choose where I aim. And that's really where I see lots of golfers making a mistake. I have to aim my dispersion. I have to look at what my average shot would look like and position that on the green. So the way I want me to think, I have to think about this, is if I was to hit 107 irons and plot where they land, there's gonna be a dispersion. And I'm looking to aim that dispersion. So for me, this is out to the right of the flag, which means that if I hit it a little left, I'm okay. A little right, I'm okay. And a good shot, I'm okay. It gives me a greater chance of hitting the green. So my line is probably some 10 or 15 feet right of the flag. And that should leave me a fairly mid-range putt for birdie. That's into the heart of the green. If that's the right club, it should be about perfect. There we go, so it's pin high, probably some 20, 25 yards right. That was exactly as I planned the shot out. Really avoided any chance of going in those bunkers and giving myself a good chance at making a birdie, or a chance of making a birdie. Maybe not a good one. So I've probably left myself just over 20 feet, um, a little bit uphill, a little bit right to left. And it's a decent chance because it's uphill means it can be a little bit more aggressive. Now, one of the things that's really helped me with my putting is I read the green, I choose the break, and I visualize the putt. And once I've done that, I then just walk in, put it behind the ball, couple of looks and I go, and I don't make any practice swings. And for me, it's enabled me to be a little bit more reactionary when I putt, a little bit more almost like I was as a junior on that putting green, you just throw the ball down and hit your putt to the hole. And I find I have a lot more success that way. So I've read it, I've got my line, I've visualized the putt, and I'm just gonna walk in. Okay, and slightly under read it and slightly under hit it. It's a little bit slower up that hill than I thought, but that should be a relatively straightforward par on what could be a tricky par three. So onto the 16th tee, the par four, uh, dog leg left to right, and it's a real tricky one today with this pretty strong breeze now. But this video is all about decisions. It's all about the choices that you make on the golf course in terms of the clubs that you pull and the points that you pick out to aim at. And I've partnered up with Y Food, who do a meal replacement drink. And the reason I really like this product is because it helps you keep your energy levels high during a round of golf. And if you keep your energy levels high, the decisions that you make will be better, 100%. Far too often we see golfers making poor decisions on the back nine because they're fatigued. You've been on the course for four to five hours, you haven't eaten properly, you haven't drunk properly, and you start to make poor decisions because of that. So this is a meal replacement drink. It's high in protein, it's glucose free, it's lactose free, and it's gonna provide me energy for up to five hours. So I will carry this in my golf bag. It's really easy just to pop in there the night before. It's ready, I don't have to worry about it, and I can just sit this during the round of golf, and it keeps my energy levels high, and ultimately that keeps my concentration high. And that's really what we're talking about in this video because very often we know what we should be hitting off the tee, we know where we should be aiming, but as I say, later on in the round, we start to get fatigued, we start to make bad decisions. So carrying something like this is gonna really help you keep those energy levels nice and high. So 
let's talk about this 16th hole now. Now it's a real tricky one because it's a big, big dog leg from left to right and that wind is pretty strong into me. So I really need to make sure that I pull the right club and don't go straight through the fairway. Now the wind is a, a variable that we have to manage through the round of golf. We have to sort of constantly adjust our clubs based on the wind. And for me, this is normally a two iron off this tee and I can't run out of fairway, but I'm gonna hit three wood simply because that wind is, is pretty strong and it's, I would say, pretty straight into my face. Now, this is a left to right hole and I predominantly will hit the ball right to left from the tee. So straight away, this is a hole which potentially doesn't suit my eye as well as some of the other holes. So I have a choice to make here. Do I play my right to left shot and try and sort of fit it onto this hole? Or do I attempt to play that left to right shot that I, I can play, I'm just not as comfortable doing that. Now, that's a decision which many of you will have to make on the golf course. Do you try and do something that you're working on your golf game or do you just go with your ball flight? And there is no right or wrong answer here. What I would say is that you have to 100% fully commit to that decision. Now, because I don't think I can run out of fairway here, I don't really feel like I need to move this left to right. So I'm just going to use my stock shot. And I would say that's the best advice for you. If you can fit your stock shot onto that hole, then go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pick a line just left of these trees on the corner. Um, if it does move a little right to left, it's not a massive issue. If it drifts a bit right, it's okay. But I don't think I need to absolutely fade this to get this uh, ball flight on this hole. So standard three wood for me. And that's drifted a little right, but it should be perfect. It's just drifted and carried just over those trees. So again, a, a good choice of aim for me. I aimed you know, left of what I needed to, which gave me a little bit of room to the right. I did leak it a little right, and it's absolutely perfect now. So that should give me a good approach into the green. Now, I couldn't really have left myself in a better position. I intended this ball to go 20 yards further left, which would actually have put me sort of more behind the camera and a longer shot in. Uh, but where it is is absolutely fine. I'm going to choose 9-9. Now I've only got 120, 125 to the flag. But the things I'm going to really worry about here is the water short, which is certainly a factor, and also the wind, which is now into and off the left. So 125 yards for me could be a pretty full 52 degree wedge. But if I hit that fall, I'm going to hit it pretty high and I'm going to impart lots of spin. Lots of spin then brings in the chances of that ball sucking into the water. Or with that spin and the wind, if that wind gusts, it's going to force the ball up and it's going to maybe take five to 10 yards off it. So hitting a full shot from here increases the chances of me going in that water. So I'm going to take a nine iron, which means I'm going to make a much softer swing, a much slower swing. I'm going to flight it a little lower, it means that it's going to be less spin, and it's going to be less affected by the wind. I'm also not going to be too concerned with going at that flag. I really want to be kind of thinking more middle of the green, which is maybe some 15 feet left of it. So a little flighted nine iron, left of the flag. So that wind's just gusting now, so I'm going to just wait because I've not factored in that wind to hit the shot in. It's just dropped a little now. This is more the kind of wind that it has been for the last few minutes choosing the shot, so. And I've hit that a lot further right than I intended, but it should be on the front of the green. Okay, that wasn't a great shot to be honest. That's gone, that's probably gone some 25, 30 feet right of where I aimed. But again, it was a good choice of where to aim. I didn't go at the flag. If had I gone at that flag, that would have missed the green on the right. And, you know, I have to appreciate that I'm not going to hit perfect shots. And I, I do have to, as we said on that first hole, play to my dispersion. And that allows me to hit less than perfect shots like that one and still be in a position where I've got a birdie putt. So in the end, I'd be pretty happy with that result, considering uh, there was a bit of wind up there, the pin was right at the back, and actually it wasn't a great shot that I hit. To leave myself probably 25 feet up the hill for a bird is a pretty good pretty good putt. So I've had a read of this, it's a little bit off the right um, and it's pretty much uphill all the way. Now I tend to use the line on the ball and I would encourage you to do that. Um, I think it helps more than it, it hinders. So once I've chosen the read, I place the line where I want my ball to start, which is out to the right. And then I pick my marker up and I step back just to confirm that what I saw is correct. And then once I step in, 
that's the point where I have to be fully committed. I have to just go with that line. I have to trust my read. And like we said in that previous hole, I'm gonna be quite reactive here. As soon as my putter goes in, a couple of looks and then pull the trigger. And that was a good read. I just under hit it slightly. The fact that it was uphill all the way made that quite a tricky putt to hit hard enough, but it was a good read. It's left me a pretty simple tap in. And so far that's two stress-free pars. Um, but really those are stress-free because of the decisions that I made off the tee and also into the greens as well. So this is the 17th. It's the par five and it's a bit of a dog leg right to left. It's definitely reachable. The difficulty today is that the wind's off the left, so the whole move's right to left and the wind's off the left, so it doesn't quite match. And I can't carry the trees on the corner. Um, if I could, it would just be driver over those trees and get in the fairway. So I'm gonna have to go right to those trees. Now, when I go right to those trees, hit driver and I can run through the fairway. So for me, I'm gonna hit three wood, which gives me a little bit more margin of error. I can hit it a little further right before I run out of fairway, and I can still reach in two. So I don't have to automatically hit driver, I have to factor in how long is the whole plane, what will this leave me? And then that really gives me the confidence that this is the right club to hit. Now, once I've chosen that club and I've selected the shot I want to hit, I need to pick a target. And I want you to be specific with your target. I don't want you to think fairway. Fairway could be 30 to 40 yards wide. We don't focus, we don't concentrate, and we make a loose swing. I want you to be specific. Now, there's obviously not many landmarks out there, so I'm gonna just pick a specific point on one of those trees in the distance, whether it be a branch protruding or a, a different coloration of the tree, whatever it may be, I need to be very, very specific. And when I'm over the ball and I'm looking up, that's what I'm seeing. So for me, three wood, I've got my point. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a nice committed swing. I don't have to do anything with the ball fly, so it's just a stock three wood for me. And that's gonna be perfect. A little right to left. Now I got a little lucky there because that was slightly from the toe of the three, which meant it started out right and it drew more than I wanted, but it actually fitted the hole perfectly. So that wasn't a great swing, but I got a little lucky and it's gonna be in good shape. So tee shots ended up absolutely perfect. So I have just missed the fairway on the right, but it's only in the fringe grass and it's probably gone some 20 yards further than what I intended. It must have had a, a nice bounce and the shape was kind of suiting the hole. So it's left me in a really good spot. And I've probably only got, well, we'll go through the distance in a moment, but I've only got probably 170 left of the flag. We've still got that wind, which is pretty strong into me off the left still. Obviously have to factor that in. And we've got a lot of water short. Now this is a par five. So really, if I can get myself on the green, two put for birdie, I'm pretty happy. So my goal really, if we look at where that flag is, I don't really want to be short of the flag, that's a little risky, and I don't really want to be left of the flag because there's no green there. So I want to be kind of just right of the flag, pin high to a little long. I've got 155 front, 170 flag. And I'm gonna hit seven iron. Now a good seven iron for me is about a 190 carry. So I'm factoring in here, maybe sort of 10 to 15 yards wind, which might mean that this seven iron, if hit it really well, might go five yards long. So that's pretty much a good club for me. And I really want to try and finish this golf ball right of my flag. So long right is what I'm intending to hit this shot. Let's see how close we can get. That's gonna be pretty good, I think. Okay. So it's actually come up a little short and probably about 10 feet right of the flag. So I missed just that slightly. I expected that 7-9 to go a little long. But again, it's good course management. I wanted to hit a club, which I thought was long because that was where the room was. I didn't want it to be short. I've underclubbed it, but it's on the green. So I think it's a really important message here. I've almost played these three holes now and I've not really yet hit a perfect golf shot. But if we make good decisions, we choose the right clubs, we aim in the right place, we are confident and committed, you can actually play great golf and shoot great scores without actually hitting perfect shots. 
the key for me there was I intended to hit that ball long because I knew that if I slightly misjudged it, I had some room. If I'd have tried to hit that just on the front edge to give myself an uphill putt and then misjudge it, then we're struggling. I'm in the water and I'm struggling to make five, might even make six. So as it happens, I've hit a slightly less than perfect shot, but I've got myself probably a 20 foot up the hill for eagle. Okay, so this is actually a little closer than I thought. I thought it was about 20 feet, but it's probably uh, probably just over 15. And again, a really good look actually, uphill, right to left. Those are kind of the putts you want. Didn't intend to leave myself this putt. I wanted to be a little bit past the flag and avoid the water, but I'm honestly really, really happy with this. So for every similar what we've done before, I've read it, I know it's uphill, I know it's off the right. I'm gonna put my line on the ball. I'm gonna step back. Once I'm happy that that line is correct, which it is, I then step in, I really want, sort of as fewer thoughts over this as I can and just a little bit more reactive. And a slight under read. But a pretty straightforward two put birdie. So a couple of really important takeaways from this video which I think can help anybody. I've just played 15, 16, 17. I've played those three holes in one under par. I didn't aim at any flags. I played away from all the flags and I didn't really hit any perfect shots. Um, I hit good shots that were obviously on the green and I swung the club well and hit nice shots and solid shots, but nothing was a, a kind of career shot that was a three without the rough to three feet or anything like that. I just managed my game well. I understood what my tendencies are. I understood what my tendencies were in terms of dis, um, dispersion. I aimed accordingly, I played away from the water, and I made good decisions, and probably more importantly, I was committed on every single shot. The reason I was committed on every single shot was because my process was good. I was over the ball, 100% committed, I had the right club, I was choosing the right aim point, and those things really helped me focus. The problems that I see on the course when people hit poor shots is because in their mind they are maybe not convinced they've got the right club or they're aiming and they're not sure about the water and those are the things that can really affect your goal sink. So hopefully that video is helpful, shows you a little bit about how I manage my game, how I play golf. I don't hit perfect shots, not many of us do, but it doesn't mean you can't hit great shots and it doesn't mean you can't play and shoot low scores. Thanks for watching, user stuff is down below, there's a like button down there, there is a comments box down there also, and in that description there is a link also for the Y Food product if you'd like to try it. I really think it's going to help you on the course, maintain your concentration levels, make some better decisions and ultimately shoot some lower scores. Thanks for watching.